Hello everybody, welcome into the next game in the 1969 National League pennant chase. I have condensed both the ticker sheet and the schedule sheet into one as we're winding down to either five or six games remaining in the regular season, depending on which team you're talking about. Three teams in the West have six games remaining. The two top contenders in the East have five games remaining. I have went ahead and removed Atlanta because they're four and a half back with only five games left to play. Even if they went out the last five games, I don't think they're mathematically still in it. So I've removed them from there. Um, I've also removed them from the ticker. So they're not showing up on the ticker either. And we're just concentrating on those these five teams that are listed. We are at September the 26th. And the game of choice is San Francisco and Los Angeles. That makes the most sense because of the two top teams in the NL West. Whereas you have the Mets playing the Phillies, the lowly Phillies. Cubs are playing the Pirates. So didn't really see any need in going there. All right. And then the next game, it'll be Chicago and Pittsburgh. So we will get to see Chicago play the Pirates. They didn't want to play the Giants and the Dodgers Three games in a row. I'm already playing them on the 28th, so two out of the three are going to be played on the video. And we'll have one of the games done on the ticker. So, as we get ready to play, we are at Dodger Stadium. Most times I play the Dodgers, they've been on the road. This time they're at home. So, the Dodgers get some home cooking at Dodger Stadium. And the starting pitchers for today's game Don Sutton for the Dodgers and Gaylord Perry for the San Francisco Giants. We'll get the starting lineups shown to you really quickly as we slide in the old score sheet. And we have for the visiting San Francisco Giants, Tito Fuentes at third, Ron Hunt at second, Willie Mays in center, Willie McCovey at first, Bobby Bonds in right, Bob Berta in left, Jack Hyatt catching, Hal Lanier at short, and Gaylord Perry on the mound. For the Dodgers, Maury Wills at short, Ted Sizemore at second, Willie Davis in center, Willie Crawford in right, Jim LaFever at third, Len Gabrielson in left, Wes Park at first, Tom Haller catching, and Don Sutton on the mound. And one little oddity I just noticed, that the number three and four hitters for both teams are, have first names of Willie. Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Willie Davis, Willie Crawford. All we're missing now is Wet Willie, who did the, who was a, a singing group in the 70s did their probably most famous song was keep on smiling so the dodgers would like to keep on smiling and, and close the gap on the dodgers so we'll see if they can get that done don sutton finishing up the warm-up tosses so let's make sure everything is showing into place i think it is so i think everything is where everybody can see it the Giants won this real game 2-1, to one, so Dodgers would like to change that history just a bit, as you might imagine. Let's get the, try to get some extra, whoops, I'll get some extra lighting over here to the dice tray so you can see it. I'm playing this game at night, so in the living room here, we don't, I mean, the, there's a main light, but it's way back there. It doesn't really affect this, so the lamp light's the best I can do with it. So we shall see how this goes. Looks like everything is copacetic as I'm looking through the phone. So I will go ahead and have a seat and we'll get started. Tito Fuentes will lead things off and again, can't overemphasize the importance of this game. Dodgers are two back with six games left. If the Giants should happen to beat the Dodgers, that would put them three back with five remaining and that would really not quite sew it up, but come very, very close to doing so. All right, we're ready to go. Don Sutton to Tito Fuentes. 4-2. Air on a ground ball, possibly. Tito Fuentes, 2-6. Star, 3. Ground ball to third. Air rating of the third baseman, Lefevre, is a 3. That's an 8. Lefevre will make the play as the 8 is greater than the 3 which means there's no error. And Fuita, Tito Fuentes is retired one away for Ron Hunt, second baseman. 3-4, and that's he's not tired, so there's no single there. Hunt 2-6, pops it to third. And again, Lefevre right there, two up and two down. 
Jim Lefevre catch it. Here's Willie Mays, 3-2, blank on Sutton. Willie Mays, 4-4, say hey, gets a single to center field. Two out single by Willie Mays. He's got an attempt of one. And Sutton's a one for a jump rating of two, but nothing's happening. Certainly not trying to bunt with Willie McCovey. So McCovey is up with Bonds at first base and two down. Sutton, 3-2 is a blank again. We'll go to Willie McCovey. 2-3, and it's a split chance against a right-hander. He's going to ground to second. And that's put away by the second baseman Sizemore to end the inning. Nothing doing for the Giants. We go to the bottom of the first. It's San Francisco nothing, and the Dodgers coming to bat. And Gaylord Perry and his spitball are warming up. It'll be Maury Wills to lead things off against Gaylord Perry. 4-2, then right off the bat, home run question mark. He's a switch hitter batting left-handed. 1-16 is the home run check. That's a 15. He passes. But his home runs against right-handers, only a 1. This has to be a 1. And it is. How about that? Maury Wills. How do you like that? Maury Wills homers off of Gaylord Perry. Guess that ball wasn't wet enough. And Maury Wills took it out of Dodger Stadium's over the right field wall for the home run. Dodgers lead it one to nothing. And Walter Austin is very, very happy right now. Here's Gaylord Perry. To Sizemore, 6-4, potential walk. And he walks at an 11, minus 3, still an 8. So that passes, and we get the walk. Sizemore draws the walk. He's got an attempt of 1. And there's nothing going on. He will hold. Infield will play halfway for Willie Davis. 6-3 is another, it's a double question mark, actually. And against the left-hander, 1 to 10 is a single. That's a 9. That'll be a single. So not a good start here for Gaylord Perry. He's getting roughed up. Must not have that saliva working just right yet. S1 to get from first to third. He got to have a 4 base running rating. Sizemore is a 4, so he will make it to third base. So runners are at the corners with nobody out. And Willie Davis has an attempt of 5. He's got a 3, so he's going to attempt to go. He's a 14, plus 2 from Perry is a 16. Catcher, minus 2 height is a 14. 1 to 14, he'll steal it. And he's out. How about that? That'll slow, slow him down a little bit. As, Tom, as uh, Jack Hyatt with that minus 2 arm throws him out. Lanier puts on the tag, and all of a sudden now, one out the runner at third. Now the infield can come in for Willie Crawford. Perry, 3-4 is a blank. We go to Crawford's card. 3-4 again. And that is a ground ball right back to Gaylord Perry. That's going to freeze the runner. He's, there's no way he can come in on that. Uh, Sizemore runs at a 4, but with the infield on the end, it's a 2. And it's hit right back to the pitcher, so he's not going to try it. He's just going to hold right there. And they'll throw Crawford out for out number 2. So 2 down. And that's going to send us to Lefevre. Perry, 5-5. Five, five. It's a blank. We go to Lefevre's card. 3-6. Ground ball to second. Innings over. And what looked like a promising big inning for the Dodgers. Only one run comes to fruition, and that could come back to bite them. As Gaylord Perry gets out of all that mess, only allowing the home run by Maury Wills, of all people. So we go to the second, one nothing. Dodgers, Don Sutton giving the lead to try to protect. Be facing Bobby Bonds to lead it off. 1-2 is a ball, ball one. 2-3 is a blank, we go to Bobby Bonds. 5-4 and he singles the center field. Lead off single for Bonds, he's looking to run. He's got an attempt of five, plus one is a six. Cannot get the jump, so Bonds has to hold. For the left fielder, Bob Berta. Infield is halfway. 1-1, one, one, strikeout chance. Berta, not enough. He will get the swing. 5-1, star one. Ground ball to second. Could be a double play. He's a one. They're halfway. Makes him a two. 
nothing on Sutton. The pivoted short is Wills. He's a minus one, so it has to be a one to be a double play. And it's not going to get there. Three is not more than Bonds' adjusted run rating, so Bonds will actually advance. And the only play will be a 4-3 ground ball, uh, second to first, allowing Bonds to get to second. So since Bonds had a five base running rating, it's dropped by one to a four with the infield halfway, but that three on the white die, the four still beat it. So Bonds gets second base. Roll for the strat, roll for Sutton, checking for pickoff for Balk, nothing happening. And that brings up Jack Hyatt. One five, possible error on a throw. Hyatt four six, that's a, a ground ball to short. That's a 10. Maury Wills is a 9, so there's no error there. It'll be a 6-3 ground out. Now to get from 2nd to 3rd, Bonds has a 5 base running range, so this is a 4 or less. He will make it to 3rd base. And he does not. It's a 5. He has to hold. So he holds at 2nd base with 2 down for Hal Lanier. Now 1st base is open for Gaylord Perry, but Lanier is only a 228 hitter, so it's a good chance they can get Lanier and have Perry lead off the next inning, which would be more profitable for them. So they're not going to walk Hal Lanier. Well, that's a 20, so they might do something else here. One's a balk, two's a pickoff, and three's a pickoff error. That's a 16, so Bonds gets back. So they're not going to walk Lanier. They're going to pitch to him. Sutton, 6-5, blank. We go to Lanier's card. 2-6, and that's a mistake. Single pass second. They tried to take a chance, and it did not, did not pay off. Bonds, who runs at a five with two outs as a six, so he's going to automatically score. We are tied at a run apiece. So they took a chance, and it backfired as lowly Hal near a 228 hitter, found a single. And that's just the way it went. So we're tied at one, and Gaylord Perry will now get the hit. They were hoping to have him lead off the next inning, but he will get the hit. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Sutton to Perry. 3-2 is a blank. We go to Perry's card. 2-5. He's going to fly to center to end the inning, but damage done. Dodgers have, uh, Giants have just tied the game at one, thanks to the big base hit by Hal Lanier. And we go to the bottom of the second. It'll be Len Gabrielson to lead off against Gaylord Perry, followed by Parker and Haller. 2-5, that's a range play at Dodger Stadium. Range play at Dodger Stadium. 2-2, two -two, ground ball to first, so a range of Willie McCovey. He's a two. This has to be a two or less. It is. Willie McCovey gets it. He'll be a three to one put out as he flips to Gaylord Perry covering. One down, and that brings up Wes Parker. 6-2, six 6-2 two. Six two is a strikeout chance. This is a three, it went in the shadows a little bit. 6-2, that is a three, so he will strike out Will Wes Parker. That's two down. And that's going to send us to Tom Haller, the catcher. Perry, 2-5. Range play at Dodger Stadium once again. 1-4, that is a single plus to center field. So the range of the center fielder, Willie Mays, is only a two. As he's up in years, he's, he doesn't cover much ground, so he's a two. But he's able to cover that one. So not only will it not be a single with a possible chance for a double, it's not even a single. As Willie Mays tracks it down to end the inning. So we go to the third. Still one to one. Dodgers feel like they should be ahead in this game, but they're not. And it's definitely the pressure is all on the Dodgers because they it's pretty much a must-win game. Fuentes to lead it off. 1-6, double question mark. Fuentes switch hitter bang left. 1-7 to seven is a single. That's a 6. Tito Fuentes, a leadoff single. He's got an attempt of 2, plus 1 from Sutton. is a 3. Uh, 20, though, is chance for a balk pickoff or pickoff error. And he got back in time. So Fuentes gets back. And they'll just pitch to Ron Hunt. 6-6, six, six, strikeout chance, that's a 5, and he is a 5, no, no adjustment from the park. So it will be a strikeout. One away for Willie Mays. Nothing on the strategy roll. 
6-1 strikeout chance. Mays is gone. Two down. So Sutton strikes out Willie Mays. Brings up McCovey. Nothing on the strat. Sutton, 5-2. Hit by pitch. McCovey's a 5. Sutton, though, is a minus 6. So no, no hit by pitch. McCovey swings, 4-2. Ground ball to first. Parker makes the play, and the inning is over. So nothing doing for the Giants here in the top of the third. We go to the bottom of the third, tied at 1 here at Dodger Stadium. September 26th, very important day as the number of games are... Slowly running out for both teams. Only five games after this one for both teams. So they got to make every game count. Here's Don Sutton. 3-6 from Perry. Strikeout chance. He got him. Sutton gone. Here's Maury Wills. He had that rare homer his first time up. 2-5. That's a range play at Dodger Stadium. I've hit that 2-5 three times now on Gaylord Perry's card. But it hasn't worked for the Dodgers yet. 6-4, it won't work again. That's ground ball to second. Four out number two. And that brings up Teddy Sizemore. 5-4 is the ballpark card going right back to the ballpark card, but no. Oh, you know what? That was a range play on a ground ball to second. Let me go, let me back up. That was a range play. So this roll is not going to count. I need to do a range play. I prematurely put down a ground out to second. When it was actually a range play, and I did not check the range. Because clearly it was a 2-5 roll. I actually pointed it out. So don't know how I missed that. But it was a ground, the, the roll was a ground ball to second. So the range of the second baseman for the Giants, Hunt is a three. He's got to get roll a three or less to get to this. And he does. So actually now the 4-3 does count. So anyway, all right, there we go. Now we can have another roll. Now, or I could keep the original roll because the original roll for Sizemore sent him to the ballpark, but I had not rolled on the ballpark yet. So I think I'm going to keep that roll because it was a good roll. Why, why change it? So it went to the ballpark card. We're going to the ballpark card for Sizemore. 6-4, and it's another ground ball to second. The exact same roll. This one's not a range play. It's just a regular ground out, and the inning is over. So, sorry for that little confusion, but I'm glad I at least caught it so I didn't miss something. We go to the fourth, tied at one. Bobby Bonds steps up. 6-2, that's a walk chance, and Bonds will draw the walk. He's reached, I'm sorry, up here. He's reached twice in a row. Single and now a walk, and of course he's going to try to steal. Tempt of six. And he will take the, take the chance to steal. He's got an 18. Plus one's a 19. Howler's a plus one's a 20. So the only way he's going to be out is if this is a 20. And he steals it. So Bonds with a stolen base. He is at first, a second base with nobody out. Roll strat again. Nothing happening this time. Bonds is at second with nobody out for Bob Berta. 4-2. Possible error on a ground ball. Berta. 4-2 again. And that's a double to left field. There is no ground ball to worry about there. That's a double, RBI double. And that will score Bonds to make it 2-1 to one Giants. 2-1 to one Giants. And even if you check for an error on left fielder, that's a 15. The left fielder error rate in Gabrielson is only 11, so there's no error. So Berta with a double. And now roll the strat roll for Hyatt. Nothing happening. Sutton to Hyatt, 5-3, strikeout chance. That's a one. He got him, out number one. That brings up Lanier. Nothing on the strat. Sutton, 2-3, blank. We go to Lanier's card. 3-5. That's a star one, ground ball to second. That's out number two. Berta will go to third. So Berta is now at third base with two down for Gaylord Perry. Strategy roll, 20, chance for a balk, pickoff or pickoff error. And nothing's happened. So, oops, so Sutton to Perry. 3-4, he's not tired, so it's not a single. Perry, 1-4, star two, ground ball to short. But the Giants take the lead. The walk, the stolen base, and the double by Berta. So Bonds and Berta took care of it. They give the Giants a 2-1 lead. And Perry seems to 
have gotten his saliva working now after a couple of innings. Here's Willie Davis. 5-6, blank. We go to Davis. 2-6, and that's a base hit. Willie Davis, singles. He's two for two. And he's got an attempt of five. And nothing's happening, so Willie Davis will hold. Willie Crawford. 4-1, strikeout chance, seven. Got him, one down. And now again, we'll check for the jump of Willie Davis, who's an attempt of five. And nothing, still nothing happening. Here's Lefevre. 4-3. Lefevre's switch hitter batting left. That's a walk chance, but 19 is too much. Lefevre gets to swing. 5-6. He's going to single pass second. So a single pass second. And the run rating of Willie Davis is a 5. So he will make it to third base no problem. Runners are at the corners now with one out. And back come the Dodgers, attempt of one for Lefevre. And nothing's happening. So infield for the Giants at double play depth. They will not play in. They'll play halfway to try to turn the regular double play. Perry to Gabrielson. 2-1, possible error on a grounder. 1-6, a ground ball to second. That's an eight. Second baseman error rating for the Giants as Hunt is a five. So he will not make the error, but they will try to turn the double play. He's a two. Minus one is a one, but they're halfway. Brings it back to a two. The pivot Lanier is a zero. So one to two, it's a double play. Anything higher than two, the run will score. It's a five. The run's going to score. So Willie Davis will tie the game by trotting in from third. And the five is greater than Lefevre's run rating, so it will be a fielder's choice, four to six. But the return throw to get Gabrielson was not in time. We are tied at two here in the fourth. Attempt of one for Gabrielson. Nothing happening. Not going to do a hit and run, I don't believe. So Parker, the batter against Perry. Three, six, strikeout chance. It's in the shadows again. It's a six. He's a seven, so he's gone. That's going to end the inning. But the Dodgers get the run to tie it. And after four complete, it's tied at two. Another nip and tuck tight game here in the 69 replay, particularly when you get these top teams playing each other. Here's Tito Fuentes. One, four. Strikeout chance. That's a seven. He's gone. One down. And that's going to send us to Ron Hunt. 4-5. And that's a possible walk. 10 will not be a walk. He's a 12, but it's a minus 3. Makes it a 9, so it's out of range. Ron Hunt will have to earn it. 4-2. And he grounds to short for out number 2. So 2 up and 2 down for Willie Mays. We get a 4-2. That's a possible error on a grounder. And that's a 1-5. Question mark 9. It won't be a grounder. It'll be a deep drive into the right field. 1-17 to 17 is a hit. That's a 6. That's a double for Willie Mays. Double for Willie Mays. Two-out double. He's in scoring position as the go-ahead run for Willie McCovey. Roll the strategy roll. Nothing happening. Sutton to McCovey. 5-1. Strikeout chance. That's a 6. And he got him. Covey out on strikes to end the inning. Sutton works around that double from Willie Mays. We go to the bottom of the 5th. Still tied at 2. And Tom Haller, the batter. The Haller, Sutton, and Maury Wills. 4-3. And that's a split chance. Haller's a lefty. It's a Chance for a walk, but 17 is way too high for that, so Haller gets the swing. 4-4, four, four, and that's a split chance against a right-handed pitcher. That's a single. Single to second base, so Haller reaches. He has no attempt, so we won't have to worry about that. Sutton, looking to bunt. He's a 3, but they're going to be playing in at the corner, so it turns into a 2 on a potential bunt. 2-5 is a range play at the ballpark, but we're ignoring that because we're doing a bunt. So the bunt is going to override that. So we'll re-roll. We'll just roll and see if there's a strikeout or not. 
Roll the bunt. He is a two. And that's a 19. That's not good. Two and a 19 is a bunted too hard, proceed as you would a ground ball double play. The five says it was fielded by the third baseman. So the third baseman, Fuentes, is going to field this bunt. The pivot then is the second baseman, Hunt. So double play rating of Sutton is a three. Minus one from Perry makes him a two. And let's see how we if we can get a one or a two to get the double play. If not, the runner is going to advance or possibly advance. We get a two. It's a double play. So we hit it too hard. Turns into a 5-4-3 double play. Two down that quickly. Here's Maury Wills. 1-1. One, one. Switch hitter batting left. That's a blank. Go to Wills' card. 1-2. Flies to center to end the inning. And we go to the sixth. Still tied at two. Both pitchers have fatigue. Batters faced of 30 and 31. So they're definitely nowhere near being tired yet. So they can go for a couple innings most likely. Here's Bonds. 6-4. That is a potential walk. 14 will not walk. He does walk at a 14 here, but at the minus three stadium takes the walk away. So Bonds has to earn it. 1-4. He flies to right. One down. And here's Berta. Had that big RBI double last time. 3-1 is blank. We go to Berta. 5-1. Star 1 is a ground ball to second. Out number 2 to Jack Hyatt, the catcher. He's 0 for 2. Rounded a short and struck out. 4-4 four, four is the ballpark card going to Dodger Stadium for Hyatt. 6-6. Six, six, that's a ground ball to short. Taken over there by Maury Wills. Throws to Parker and the inning is over. We go to the bottom of the six, still tied at two. Who's going to flinch? That's the question. Here's Ted Sizemore. He's 0 for 1, a walk and a ground out. 5-5 five, five is a blank. We go to Sizemore. 6-5, fly to right, one away. Now it looks like both pitchers are kind of in a groove. Here's Willie Davis. 2-2, two, two, strikeout chance. That's a one. He's gone. Two down for Willie Crawford. One three is a blank. We go to Crawford. Four two, and that is a split chance against a right-hander. He does single. So two out single for Crawford. See if he can get anything going. He's got an attempt of two, but he can't get a jump, so he will stay put. And Jim Lefevre, the batter. Three five. He's a switch hitter batting left, so it will not be a strikeout plus. It'll be a blank, and Lefevre gets to swing. 6-1, grounder to second. That's going to end the inning. So we go to the seventh. Still tied at two. It'll be Hal Lanier, Gaylord Perry, and Tito Fuentes for the Giants here in the seventh. 3-2, that's a blank. We go to Lanier. 6-5, star 5, fly to center. One away for Gaylord Perry. Sutton, 1-3, range play. So we go to Perry's card for a range play. 5-3, fly to right. Checking the range of the right fielder, Willie Crawford. He's only a 2. This could drop. And it will drop. Is it a single or a double? It's only a single since it wasn't a 5 or a 6 that second time around. But it is a single for Gaylord Perry. One out single. Here's Tito Fuentes. Strategy roll, nothing happening. 5-2, hit by pitch. He's a four, but again, the minus six takes care of that. Fuentes will swing. 5-6, ground ball to second. Could be a double play. But Fuentes is a zero. They were halfway, makes it a one. And the pivot to Wills is a minus one, makes it a zero, so they cannot get the double play. The only question is, can they get the force play? Gaylord Perry runs at a one, so it's an automatic force play because he drops to a zero for there being halfway, so it's an automatic force play, but no double play. So it's a fielder's choice. Don't even have to roll for it. Fielder's choice, Fuentes reaches, 
and the out goes four to six for out number two. Fuentes does have an attempt of two plus a one is a three. Nothing happening, so he'll stay put. Ron Hunt, three, three. Range play at Dodger Stadium. Five, five, that's a single to right, but again, range check for Willie Crawford, a one to two. He will take that base it away. And he does, Willie Crawford. Big play there, that could probably would have put runners on the corners had he not caught that. That's gonna end the inning. We're going to the seventh inning stretch, tied at two. Would you expect anything other than a nip and tuck in this 69 replay? Especially with these top teams playing each other. So Len Gabrielson will lead it off, followed by Parker and Haller. Sutton has faced 30 batters. I'm sorry, 29 batters. He can face 30. So if they get to his spot in the order, we may get a pinch hitter. Perry, 1-3, blank. We go to Gabrielson's card. And 6-1, ground ball to second, one away. And Manny Mota is over there on the Dodger bench, just eager to get a chance. Here's Wes Parker, 2-3, the walk chance, and that's a 9, so he will walk. One out walk to Wes Parker. Parker's attempt is a 1. Can't get it, so he will stay put. And here's Tom Haller, the catcher. 2-5, and that's again about the fourth time Gaylord Perry's rolled a 2-5. It is a range play at Dodger Stadium. That's a 2-1, question mark 9. And that's a seven, which means that would be a single to right field. But we have to check the range of the right fielder. In this case, Bobby Bonds, he's a three. If it's a three or less, he takes that single away. And he cannot, it's a base hit for Haller, single to right field. Let's see if Parker can move up. Parker runs at a four. To go from first to third on a single, you gain two, so that makes him a six. And Bonds is a zero, so he will make it to third without a throw. So runners are at the corners with one out, and they're going to have to pinch hit for Don Sutton. Now, there's no, no ifs, ands, buts about it. They have to do it. They need the offense. They need the run. And it will be the aforementioned Manny Mota coming on. Manny Mota, pinch hitter extraordinaire late in his career, but he needs to... Carry that into the 1969. Now, Perry can face 31 batters. This is batter number 27, so he is not tired. It's just a matter of how they want to play this. The infield, they could play at the corners. They could play in. I think they're going to play the infield in because Perry's got a minus one double play rating. His is only a two. So you're looking at mostly a two for a chance for a double play. So they're going to play the infield in. Infield in against Manny Moto means the range of, if there's a range check, they're really in trouble. 5-2, that's the ballpark card going to Dodger Stadium for Manny Mota. 2-1, question mark 9. That's a 3. It's a base hit. Didn't matter where the infield was. It's a base hit for Manny Mota. Pinch hit single. And Mota comes through. Gives the Dodgers a 3-2 lead. And with that base hit to left, the base hit went to left field. Or did it go to right field? I'm sorry, it went to right field. Went to right field, it was a 2-1, it was a question mark 9. So right field, Haller runs at a 2, but you gain 2 going to right field, makes him a 4. So 1-4, to four and he'll make it. 5, he's got to hold it second, so he cannot advance. But the Dodgers do take the lead. They take a 2-1 to one lead here in the bottom of the 7th. 2 on, only 1 out. For Maury Wills, 6-4, potential walk, and Wills will draw the base on balls. That will load the bases. Bases are now loaded for Ted Sizemore, and again, the infield will have to come in for the Dodgers. I don't think they can risk getting a double play any other way. So infield is in for the Sizemore bat. Perry really needs to strike out. 4-1, he's got a chance, but that's a 17, way too high. So Sizemore swings. 5-2, question mark 8. 1-13 to is a hit. That's a 13. That's a triple for Ted Sizemore. It's going to clear the bases. 
A base clearing triple. That is going to be all for Gaylord Perry. Maybe he lasted one bat or too many. But a base clearing triple for Ted Sizemore. A 13 on that split. And it's right there, a triple. So for the Dodgers, now four runs are in. They lead it 6-2. to two. And we'll get a new pitcher for the Giants as Gaylord Perry just lost it all of a sudden. Was pitching so well, but that just came up to an abrupt halt. And let's see who the bolt, who the uh, new pitcher is going to be. It's going to bring in a lefty to bring in to face these lefties, Willie Willie Davis and Crawford. So let's look and see who on the who they have in their bullpen that can uh, pitch to lefties. We're going to use one of these. Uh, let's see. Do I want to use him now? We're going to use. Hmm. Mike McCormick starts tomorrow, so they can't use him. Let's see. Who do they have in the bullpen that's left-handed? Do they even have any left-handers? That's the question. Oh, they got Ray Sadecki. So they can go to Ray Sadecki. He will be in. Not the best pitcher in the world, but he is left-handed. So I guess they'll use that as some sort of a uh, reasoning. So Sadecki is on to pitch to Willie Davis. Try to minimize the damage. Runner is at third with only one out. Infield's going to have to be in, obviously. For Willie Davis is at bat. Chance for a pickoff. Nothing happening. Sadecki, 2-5, possible error. Willie Davis, 4-6, ground ball to first. Error rating McCovey is an 8. That's a 10, so there is no error. And with the infield in, that's going to take Sizemore down to a 2 base running rating. And I think they're going to hold him there. And McCovey will take it to the bag himself for out number 2. Leaves the runner at third base. They could have tried it, but they figured less, less the, the odds weren't with them. So Here's Willie Crawford. He's got a chance to still get a 2-out single. Or two out hit of some sort. Three two is a strikeout chance, but he will strike out to end the inning. So Sadecki comes in and does his job. But four runs come in for the Giants. They now lead it six to two. And what once was a nip and tuck game is nip and tuck at least no more for now. Of course, the Giants have something to say about it. And the Dodgers will need a new pitcher because they used a pinch hitter for Sutton in Manny Mota. Let's see what they want to do with this. Crawford was the last out here, so they might bring Manny Mota in. Although Matt Mota is a horrible outfielder. Let's see what they want to do here. They got some really bad outfielder range checks here. So let's see how they want to do this. Actually, they're going to bring in Bill Russell. Bill Russell will come in and play right field and bat ninth. So Bill Russell... And he's got an outfield rating range of a four, which is very good. Seven and a minus one arm. And the new pitcher will take Crawford's spot here in the cleanup position. So let's see who that's going to be. Giants have Mays, McCovey, and Bonds. So I'm thinking a right-hander is coming in for the Dodgers. So let's get a right-hander in the game. And that right-hander will be Alan Foster. So Alan Foster is in. Alan Foster. Sutton goes seven innings, and he's definitely in line for the victory. So Willie Crawford's going to leave the game, and that's where Alan Foster will be in that spot. So Alan Foster goes in the four position as the pitcher. And he's 2-8. All right, and Russell, the shortstop, will bat ninth, which means he will be the fifth hitter coming up next inning. And Willie Crawford is out of the game. All right, so Willie Mays facing Alan Foster. Top of the eighth, six to two Dodgers. 
in a must game, must win game for the Dodgers. 3-4 from Alan Foster right off the bat is a home run. And Willie Mays just went deep on the very first pitch from Alan Foster. Foster may not last. <laughs> first battery faces is a home run. It's now 6-3. to three, And the bullpen is churning for the Dodgers as we speak. Foster to McCovey, 4-3. He's not tired. So there is, I'm sorry, 4-3 is a range play at the ballpark. I was looking at 3-3. Three, 4-3 three. Three is a range play at Dodger Stadium. 5-6, star 3. Ground ball to second. So we've got the range of the second baseman, Sizemore. He is a 3. And he can't get it. It's a base hit for McCovey. And back come the Giants. Here's Bobby Bonds. Nothing on the strat. Here's Bobby Bonds. 4-6 strikeout chance, and he got him. So Alan Foster gets a big out right there with the strikeout of Bonds. Here's Bob Berta. Nothing on the strat roll. Berta. 5-5. Five, five. Blank. We go to Berta's card. 3-4. Ground ball to second. Could be a double play. He's a 1. They're halfway. Makes it a 2. But the pivot at short is a minus one, so it drops it to a one. And that's not gonna definitely not gonna do it. It is a five, though, and that will get the force on McCovey. So the force play is done. Four to six, fielder's choice. Two down, Berta is now the runner for Jack Hyatt. Foster to Hyatt, six two, strikeout chance, and he got him. So after giving up the leadoff homer, Foster settles down. And the lead is now 6-3 to three as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Dodgers will send up Lefevre, Gabrielson, and Parker against the lefty Sadecki. one 1-1, one, strikeout chance, 13 is too high. Go to Lefevre, 3-1, star 6, fly to right field, 1 away. Brings up Gabrielson. 2-5. That's a possible error. And that's a 2-5 again. Fly to center. That's a 2. Willie Mays is a 6, so that will be an error, but it's even, so it's not going to be an error. It has to be odd. The D20 has to be odd to be an error in that situation. And since it's even, it will not be an error. So Mays makes the catch. Juggles it a little bit, but holds on. Two down for Wes Parker. Two, three, and that's a strikeout chance, and Parker is gone. So Sadecki does his job. He's probably, I know he's done for the day because he's going to be pinch hit for in the top of the ninth. But he does his job, keeps the score right where it is. And now Alan Foster can face seven batters. You know he's faced five. He's going to come out. And they're going to go to, even though he had trouble last game, they're going to go to their closer, Jim Brewer. I mean, it's too important not to. So Jim Brewer is on to try to close the deal. Jim Brewer. And we need a pinch hitter for the Giants as well. So let's see, Brewer will hit in the, they're not going to do any double switches. They're just going to hit him in the same spot as Alan Foster was hitting. So now, Giants will send up Hal Lanier. Actually, I think they're going to pinch it for Hal Lanier as well because he's not a very good hitter. Let's see who they're going to use. They're going to have Ken Henderson as one of the pinch hitters for sure, switch hitter. And then they're looking for a right-handed hitter that might have a decent average. They've got uh, Jim Davenport. They've got Jimmy Ray Hart. So they're gonna use Jimmy Ray Hart. So Jimmy Ray Hart will pinch hit for Hal Lanier, and then Ken Henderson will pinch hit for the pitcher. So that's the way they're gonna work that here. Jimmy Ray Hart, he will pinch hit for Lanier. And then Ken Henderson will pinch hit for Ray Sadecki. 
So two pinch hitters to start the ninth against Jim Brewer. Both are batting right from the right side. And then Tito Fuentes will be following him also from the right side as a switch hitter. So Brewer to Jimmy Ray Hart, top of the ninth, six to three. Giants lead, but they, I mean the Dodgers lead rather, and they have to win or they're going to be really bad shape. So they got to hold this lead. Brewer, 6-4. Home run question mark on the very first check. 1-7. to seven. That's a 9. It does not pass. No home run. Jimmy Ray Hart, 5-2. Star 2. Ground ball to third. One away. Giants, two outs away from closing to within one game of the... I'm sorry, the Dodgers are two outs away from closing in with one game away from the Giants. With five to play, so it's really getting nip and tuck. Here's Henderson, 4-6. Switch hitter batting right, that's a walk plus. So Henderson will draw the pinch hit walk. They are playing runner safe, so no strat rolls of any kind. Although we'll do a balk chance, but I don't think it's going to happen. No, it's not. Here's Fuentes. Infield is halfway. 6-6 six, six is a range play. Fuentes... 1-6, ground ball to short. Shortstop Wills is a 4, but they're halfway. It makes him a 3. 1-3 to three to get to this. And he can't do it. It's a base hit. S6 for Fuentes. And Henderson will stop at second base because he doesn't have the speed to get there. On an S6, you have to have, to get from first to third, you have to have a speed of 5, and he doesn't have that, or a base run rating of 5, I should say. So runners at first and second. Now the tying run is at the plate in Ron Hunt. Brewer, their closer, has to bear down. Checking the strat roll. Nothing happening. Infield still halfway. There's Hunt. 5-4, and that's a walk chance. 19's too much. Hunt's got a swing. 4-3, and that's a double to center field against the left-handed pitcher. A double to center by Ron Hunt. What, did you think there'd be a 1-2-3 inning in the 69 replay? I think not. So it's a double to center field. We know that Ken Henderson's going to score. Cuts the lead to 6-4. to four. Tito Fuentes, we were saying they're playing station to station, so he automatically stops at second because they can't afford to have anybody thrown out. So he will stay there. Now the tying runs are in scoring position for Willie Mays. And Brewer in all kinds of trouble here. You wonder if they need, he needs to come out. Because you got Mays and you got McCovey coming up. Mays a right-hander. Well, he's their closer, so I mean you're going to live and die with him, I guess. Uh, like I said, no strat roll. No, uh, you know, we're not doing any kind of steals or anything. I will roll in case there's a balk. That's it. But nothing happening. All right, so... Second and third, they're going to play the infield back because they really, really need this second out. They'll give it the run to get the second out. Brewer, 6-4. Home run, question mark, 1-7, to seven, but it fails. Good thing because Willie Mays would have a chance to hit a home run. So he won't get that chance, but he will get the swing. 6-3, star 5. Ground ball to short, and that will produce the run. They will, they will concede that run. To get that out, that's out number two. RBI ground out for Willie Mays. Hunt to get from second to third. His base run range of four. You got to have a three or less to get to third base. And he does not do it. He has to hold it second. So Willie McCovey now is the batter. It's a six to five game. McCovey is the batter. Ron Hunt at second is your tying run. So we're back on the strat rolls now. All the way. 20. Chance for a balk or a pickoff. 1 to 4 is a balk. 5 to 6. It's a walk-off pickoff. It's a 1. It's going to be a balk by Brewer. And that's going to put the runner at third base where he can score automatically on a base hit or can score on an error or a pass ball or any of that stuff. So he is now at third base. This is the sixth batter, so Brewer's not tired yet. He will be tired after this at bat. If he does not get McCovey, then Pete Mickelson will be coming on. But two outs, runner at third in a 6-5 to five game. Strat roll, nothing happening. So we're Brewer to McCovey. 4-4, four, four, strikeout chance. He got him. Jim Brewer strikes out McCovey to end the game. 
And the Dodgers have life. They win it 6-5 to five over the Giants. 6-5, to five, Brewer hangs on and wins it, or saves it, I should say. Kind of a cheap save. It comes in with a three-run lead, gives up two runs, but he does qualify for a save, which is part of the ridiculous save rule, but that's just the way it is. And the Dodgers get a much-needed victory. That's almost an understatement. They had to have it. It wasn't even just much needed. They had to have it. So let's get ready for the ticker. And we'll get ready for the next game in the schedule, which is the Cubs and the Pirates coming up in the next round. So let's see what we got here. And I actually I'm changing it up to I'm not doing this, I'm not gonna do the fat cards. I'm gonna roll the dice for the two through twelve result. I'm not even gonna worry about the score. I don't care about the score. I'm just checking wins and losses. So I'm just not even really caring about the score right now. Although we'll we'll write in the LA score of six to five, even though it's kind of irrelevant. I'm just going for who's going to win and who's going to lose. Now, with the win, Los Angeles improves to 88 and 69. And they're one game behind. Let's do some of these things here. Can't clean it up a little bit. With five games left, they are one game behind the, Do the Giants, who are now 89 and 68. So 89 and 68. Now, Cincinnati is three games back, but they got a doubleheader with Houston. If they can sweep Houston, they would go to 88 and 70 and be just a game and a half back. So, chance here for Cincinnati to make hay. For Houston, two through six or an 11. If, this is, if these total at two through six or an 11, Houston will win. If any other total on the dice, Cincinnati will win. That's an 11, so Houston wins it. Houston gets the wins the first game. Now, Cincinnati has to win this game. They can't afford to get swept. If they get swept, they're pretty much eliminated. That's a 10, so they come back and win that one. So they split the doubleheader. They go to 87 and 71. But they are now two and a half games back. They do pick up a half a game. They're two and a half games back. So they are... And now just lost what they were. I think 80, I think I said 87 and 71, if I'm not mistaken. I'll go back and look at it on the computer. But I think that's what it is. Yeah, it puts them two games back in the win column, three games back in the loss column. But now they only have four games left. Do, do the uh, Reds. They got four games left. All right, Chicago and Pittsburgh. Chicago needs a four through seven or a 12 to beat the Pirates. Ten, they do not. Pirates win it. So the Cubs lose, and now the Mets have a chance to close to within one game if they can get a victory. So let's see. Mets, two through eight to beat Philadelphia. Eleven, they don't do it. Phillies win. So the Cubs and Mets both lose, and they stay status quo. Still two games back. With four to play. So the Mets miss a golden opportunity by not being able to roll a two through eight. They cannot get the win. How do you like that? That's just the way it goes. So that's the updated standings. A little messy, I know. But that's the updated standings. Um, Dodgers only one game back of the Giants now with five to play. Cincinnati's two and a half back with four to play, but three back in the loss column. So they're going to need some help. And then the Cubs and Mets both lose. So there's still two games difference with four games to play. And the next game on the schedule is going to come to you from Forbes Field. And it will be the Cubs and the Pirates. Ken Holtzman for the Cubs. Steve Blass for the Pirates. That will be the September 27th game. And then on the 28th, we'll be right back here in L.A. for the San Francisco-L.A. game between Marshall and Singer. And depending on what the ticker does, they could be tied for first place going into that game. We shall see. Uh, on September 30th, there's a limited number of games. So nothing with the Cubs or Mets, nothing with the Dodgers or Giants. Oh, I'm sorry, nothing with the Giants or the Cubs or the Mets. So my next opportunity is L.A. and Houston or Cincinnati, Atlanta. 
So I'm going to play that based on who's closest in the standings. Right now it's Houston, LA because LA's closer. But if LA falters a little bit and Cincinnati comes up, I will switch over to the Cincinnati Atlanta game. It's going to be based on who's in the running. So that's going to do it from here. Or, yeah, that's going to do it from here. So pressure is on actually the Mets because they only got four games left. Two of those are right here. And they've got two coming up, one against Philly here and one against Philly here. So they're going to have to, they can't afford to be losing to Philadelphia. That's just, that's just you know, not something they need. Pittsburgh can help them out by beating Chicago, but they got to do their part and beat the Phillies as well. But they just didn't do it. So that's going to do it from here. In this wild pennant race, the Dodgers go out to a 6-3 to three lead and darn near blow it. Giants get two in the ninth, but not enough. And the Dodgers walk away the 6-5 victory, cutting the Giants' lead in the division to one game with five games remaining. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of the 1969 Inside Pitch National League pennant chase. And until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And as usual, I will see you all down the road.